everyone, it's Shell C from Paper Octio Studio and welcome to my very first sponsored video. This video is sponsored by graphicstock.com and these images that I'm using here in front of you are from their website. They have a really great deal going on right now that they're trying to advertise. You can go to this special link on the screen right now and you can get $50 off one year of graphic stock. That will be linked in the description box below if you would like to try that out. So these images that I'm uh, that I have printed out, I was sealing them using clear gesso. So I got them all sealed, set them aside, and now I'm using an art journal that you probably haven't seen before. It's a very large art journal, and I don't use it very often because I'm usually trying to do a quick page. But since I'm not going to have to draw. On this page I can do it very quickly because I printed out the images that I wanted to use. Graphic Stock has over 300,000 images, graphics, photos, vectors, all kinds of stuff. Just tons of it. I could make a million art journal pages so if you're one of the ones that absolutely refuses to think that you can draw, Graphic Stock is great for you because you can go and just print out the images like I did here. Um, they have them that are already in color, they have them that are not colored, they have these watercolor ones like you saw, they have all kinds of really great stuff. So um, Graphic Stock is a subscription service. Most websites charge per image or per graphic for you to use it and can be up to $30 an image, but um, with them you basically are buying a license to use all the images, all 300,000 of them on your on their site and you can use them for whatever you want even if you want to make art that you're going to sell you have purchased the copyright so you can use it so I'm not breaking any rules here by using these on the web you know for my video because I, I already have a license to do that so that watercolor page that you saw me seal earlier, I tore it up and made it into little pieces for my collage here. And then I'm also using a little bit of tissue paper that's printed with text from um, a tube from Hazel and Ruby. And I'm using a couple different bits of uh, drop paper or maybe jelly print roll off paper and also a piece of jelly print just to create an interesting background. Um, yeah, it works really great to make a background with these watercolor images. I think they're interesting. And, you know, I'm being random. I'm not being really specific here, but I am kind of thinking about where I'm going to put these other two uh, graphics that I've cut out so that I don't bother to uh, collage that whole background because what would be the point? <laughs> so I keep kind of placing them and then uh, taking them off, placing them and taking them off as I'm doing my collage background. So, um, yeah, what else was I saying? Oh, Graphic Stock has uh, 300,000 images, 100% royalty free. You can use them for whatever you want. Uh, usually it's $99 a year to subscribe to their subscription, but for this holiday season they're giving you $50 off. So be sure to look down below in the description box for that link and you'll have access to that massive image library. Yeah, you could make a million pages, you could make canvases, you could make cards, you could make scrapbook pages. There's so much different stuff there to use. Um, even digital art because some of them are vectors so you can use them in digital art so check them out and hopefully I said everything I was supposed to say <laughs> so once my whole background was done then I'm getting out some India ink I want to use this as a watercolor but India ink is um, permanent once it's dry so I think it works a lot better than regular uh, watercolors when you're doing a mixed media project like this because it's not going to run when I start to put the images, when I collage the images on. You know collage is one of my favorite things, so I'm really always looking for things that I can use to 
make layers without making a big mushy brown mess of all the colors. So I am watering down some of the India inks to make them look more like watercolor. Uh, they, they are not, um, with the exception of maybe the white and the black, they are still translucent even at full strength, but I wanted them to be a little bit waterier because I'm using it as watercolor. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so, like I explained, I just left that center section empty because I knew I was going to be collaging over the top of it anyway. But other than that, I'm just filling in and I'm blotting and, uh, you know, just making it look a little bit more interesting and watery. Like you do. <laughs> I was inspired by that one that I printed out, that watercolor one that I printed out with the pretty colors from Graphic Stock. So that's what inspired my background. So I realized that I had poured out way too much of my indie inks and I didn't want to waste them. So I'm using a pipette to put them back in the box, but or the bottles, not the box. But as I did that, I also splattered some to give some more uh, color weight to my background. And then I'm using a two inch brayer to go over with a little bit of white gesso to kind of blend everything together and make it more cohesive. And then, of course, I have to trim off the edges where I collaged over the edge of the page and I want it to be a little bit more clean and smooth. So now for the collaging. This one is a cityscape. And I'm going to use Liquitex Matte Gel Formula. I like the gel formula the best for collage to put on my images. Um, did you guys notice I taped the spiral so that I would have a nice clean edge and wouldn't get glue and paint all over my spiral bound journal. I learned that from another YouTube person named Delaney. <laughs> Smart girl. <laughs> Put some tape over it. Why didn't I think of that? You know, I never think of the good stuff. And I really, really love this illustration. I think it's so cute and it, um, it's very reminiscent of my life. So I wanted to use it. And then the little dog, the little pug, was from a different graphic that had all different types of little dogs and um, words like wolf and bark and stuff like that. But I really wanted to use it with the family. I think that fur babies are part of your family, so I just got the one little guy and cut him out. You don't have to use the whole image. You can use, you know, pieces and parts. You could cut out one of these little boys if you wanted to, or, you know, you can always change even something that you've printed out. And I don't think I mentioned I printed on an inkjet printer. I don't have a laser printer, so whenever you print on inkjet, you do need to seal that if you're planning on doing collage. And that's what I was doing with the clear gesso at the beginning. So now I have my Stabilo All pencil. This is a highly water reactive pencil, and I am using the black one, and then a water barrel brush. And this, this helps if you go around the edges of the images that you've glued down, it helps to blend them into the page if you make a shadow. And that's what I'm doing with this pencil and the, then blending it out. And I'm doing it around my little family and then also around the words at the bottom. Also, this brings in some black color because I have that very stark looking black graphic of the cityscape. So, you know, needed a little bit more black down in the bottom here to make it more balanced. And I will even add more black in the form of some splatters and things like that at the end just to make it all more cohesive. So now I've got out my Neocolor 2 water uh, soluble crayons. These are kind of like an oil pastel and somebody did uh, mistake them for an oil pastel the other day. But remember they are water soluble. And these are very water soluble. They're very easy to use as a watercolor. Now I know that I'm not going to be putting anything more over the top of this. So I'm safe with using a water soluble medium to color in my image because I won't be um, doing any more collage at this point. And everything is all sealed in. The black lines are sealed in not only with the gesso, but then also with the, um, the medium that I glued it on with. I also put it over the top when I smoothed it. So it's all very sealed. So those black printed lines are not going to smear at all. 
So I'm just using um, the method of actually coloring directly onto the page with my crayons and then blending and in some cases removing or adding back highlights and shadows. And I'm using my fancy watercolor brush. I save this one for special times and I will link the brush below because I know that people have been asking me. Um, I'm going to link you guys to the place that is a great place to buy it and give you this specific brush. It holds a lot of water and it, it but yet it comes to a very very fine tip so that I can easily do small areas you know like their little faces and stuff. I have no problem even though this is a large brush and what, and what is nice about it or about any higher quality watercolor brush is that it just holds all the water up inside the bristles and just comes out right at the right um, you know uh, flow I guess you'd call it I'm pretty happy with it but I don't let anything get on it I am only I only use it with watercolor type stuff like these crayons are basically watercolor when you get down to it I don't use it with you know any acrylics or anything that might mess it up. I'm very fussy. <laughs> so you don't see this brush very often because it was expensive. It was expensive. I bought it at the Blick store, but I'm going to link you to a different place where you can get it for a lot less expensive than I paid. Sorry, Blick, but it's true. <laughs> so I'm using different... Uh, instead of making all the skin tones the same, Realistically, even in a family, you've still got two people making the kids, right? So the kids can have a blend of skin tones. It could be very dramatic in some cases, but I'm just figuring this, this chick, she's a blondie white pink skin and her one little boy is closer to her skin tone, but then her husband must be more olive toned and uh, or a baby daddy or whatever you want to call him and um, so the other boy is a little bit more olive toned because I wanted I wanted variety you know I didn't want to just use the same crayon all the way across all the faces did that make sense I hope it made sense and then this boy has darker hair and then the other boy has more of a reddish toned hair and then the, the lady has blonde hair, although you don't see that yet. So <laughs> They're all just a little bit different. Sometimes families will look very much the same. And sometimes there's a lot more variety. It's interesting. I'm sure that uh, I should have studied genetics or something. There's just so much to learn and not enough time. <laughs> so I'm generally using, in most, in most cases, at least two different colors in each section. I use two colors on the skin. I use two colors in the hair. Um, in the little jeans, I use two colors. So that gives it more variety without going overboard. I mean, you could really sit here and do, you know, six colors if you wanted to. Got plenty of those crowns. <laughs> So if you're enjoying this video, please give it a, a like, a thumbs up, you know, leave me a comment so I know you were here. Um, I'm pretty excited that I got asked to do a sponsored video. I've, I'm hoping maybe someday I'll be, you know, the frugal crafter or something. <laughs> she, all her videos are sponsored and so that means she's actually making a living being an artist, whereas I'm just spending money and not making any. So I'm excited. I, f I feel like it, it's like a next step for me. But I won't just, you know, you I won't do any just any company that asks me. It's got to be something that I would actually use. And graphic stock is something that I would use if I wanted to make a quick page or a quick card. Um, you know, even if I wanted to work on my blog or something like that, I could use some of their graphics for that. So in that way, it's a very useful service. And I think it's going to be very useful for some of you who still continue to tell me that you can't draw. 
<laughs> you really can, people. You can draw. So to finish up and add a little bit more um, flow and interest to my background, I'm using black archival ink with a heart-shaped stamp and just kind of doing a, a line of hearts across. And I think it gives it like someplace to go at the top because it was kind of blocky at the top with those cityscape bits makes it kind of blocky adding in a few highlights and um, I do end, in, end up adding a border around the edge which I forgot to film so you'll see that in the pictures and some more scribbly white highlights but I was distracted I needed more splatters so this is a cool golden high flow carbon black paint which works great for splattering and I splatter along that bottom section and then across all the hearts and I think my page turned out great be sure to check down below for the link to the special $50 off the $99 subscription at graphic stock holiday special and that's it for me thanks bye bye